Hey everyone, welcome back to your weekly market outlook. This is for the 4th to the 8th of December 23. This is the first full trading week in the month of December. My name is Vito Angelo. Let's get this started with a quick promo code that you can use to double your deposit bonus. It's VidoMA23. Code is valid until the 31st of December 2023. So make sure you're using this code if you're depositing into your Okta trading accounts. All right, so let's take a look at last week. I think there's a lot of going on last week. Uh, let's take a look at from the Australian side first so we have the cpi numbers in australia uh the headline inflation dropped down from 5.6 percent to 4.9 percent a very significant drop uh this is below the consensus of 5.2 in terms of uh new zealand the rbnz maintained rate at 5.5 percent this is as per consensus we didn't actually see a lot of price movement uh, i think the shocker last week was the preliminary gdp numbers this one here continued to push a lot higher 4.9 percent market was expecting five percent we got 5.2 percent from um the US in terms of the GDP numbers and the flash estimate for the European inflation this one also fell down below consensus 2.9% to 2.4% core dropped down from 4.2 significantly to 3.6% now other numbers uh, I do want to talk about the comments uh, that was pretty much on schedule there uh, last week uh, which is already Saturday in some part of Asia it's comments from Chair Powell in terms of the FOMC's next move. Now, um, there are talk about a potential rate cut that's been buzzing around in the market. The Fed Fund's target rate in terms of market expectation has shifted a lot. 97% is currently um, estimating that there's no interest rate hike in December from the Fed. So the in terms of interest rate hike in 2023, not going to happen anymore, right? Uh, rate cut in 2024, this one here, there was a little bit of a shift in terms of how Jay Powell has commented into the market. Uh, in terms of the rate staying higher for longer, it's still there, but there are talks about a potential soft landing. Now, this would kind of make the Fed sounds a little bit dovish and market is currently pricing in for a potential six to eight rate cuts in 2024. Therefore, the projection of that rate cuts would happen um, at the beginning of March 2024. And that's just a quarter away from where we are right now. So this is a huge shift in the market. And we actually saw how uh, the US dollar was pressured lower. And obviously, if you guys started the day today you guys trade gold you would have seen that gold has posted an all-time high at 2144 that's a 70 dollars jump in just the market opening hour today so that's very significant uh there are also other attributes to how gold uh increases because there was also an attack on uh, an american warship uh in the red sea obviously that attributes to the demand in gold as well but the notion of gold uh, increasing, there's a lot of potential risk appetite into the market. Equity market also gains on the back of last week's comment from Jay, Jay Powell. Uh, at the end of uh, the wrap for the week, it actually gains uh, significantly as well. But the thought is that a lot of people are probably going to be thinking, you know, the US dollar is probably going to be weakening and stuff like that. But we'll take a look at it from a technical perspective. That might not actually be the case. Now, let's take a look at the numbers for this week. Uh, I think for the RBA, there's no not going to be any rate hikes. Uh, the inflation has dropped significantly to 4.9%. I don't think there's any rate hike from the RBA tomorrow. The ISM services PMI, this one here is still above 50, so I don't think it's actually going to be a huge impact. The Joel's job opening numbers, uh, this is uh, market is expecting a little bit of a drop, 9.55 million to 9.33 million. And then we have the NFP numbers for uh, this week. And uh, sorry, we have the Australian GDP numbers first. This one is here ex expected flat at 0.4% growth uh, quarterly. Uh, the employment numbers from the US, the NFP number is expected to come in a little bit higher from 150,000 previous month to 185,000. It's still going to be below 200,000, but the expectation is that it could be higher. The unemployment rate is expected to remain stable at 3.9%. Uh, there are some surveys that actually came in and expect the unemployment rate to actually drop down to 3.8%. Average hourly earnings expected to pick up a little bit 
bit again, 0.2% to 0.3%. This is part of the seasonality uh, in the in the job market as well. So those are going to be the numbers for this week. Obviously, key drivers would be on the NFP, whether or not the USR is actually going to gain or not. But I want you to take a look at the dollar index first. The gain in the dollar index last week, uh, that's pretty much on the... On the um, based off the support that we have we're on 102.50 to 103 and on friday on the back of uh, comments coming up from jp uh, it does dip down a little bit but it didn't actually dip down enough below 103 so in terms of the us dollar strength uh, overall in terms and how it relates to currencies the dollar basket is still good. Uh, the US dollar is still maintaining its ground. Uh, it is at the lower end of the support area that we have here. So it's a little bit fragile, but it's not a confirmation for a weak US dollar. And this is something to take note as we trade the, the market this week, especially as the market opens up with such volatility in gold. Uh, a lot of traders would could falsely assume and kind of relates, oh yeah, gold goes up, um, then the US dollar has to go down. It might not be the case. And I'll go through the other major currencies as well so you guys can have a little bit of a picture on the whole situation. So the dollar index is pretty much stable above 103. It didn't dip down below 103, still above that range that we have 102.50, 103 on the dollar index. Now, take a look at the Aussie USD here. Even though it gains above 66 cents last week, and then it actually came back to test 66 cents, with the RBA tomorrow and the dropping inflation number in Australia, the RBA could decide not to hike interest rate, right? If there's no surprise rate cut, they might decide to pause and they could come back with a little bit of a comment saying that inflation has um, come off and they could expect inflation to come off drastically again in the future. That could send a, a notion to the market that the RBA might actually stop at um, the current interest rate and not hike further. And that would put the Aussie USD in a very tight situation because it's very close to the 67 cents resistance. Um, this has been the resistance that we saw before the fall in the month of August. And this is also where the R1 weekly pivot is currently located, about 67.10. So if price is unable to break 67 uh, at the beginning of this week, it could actually get pressured back down to 66 cents. Now, the 66 number, this one here is a little bit unique because in terms of the buying that we saw um, last week around 66, it only happened once. So this level is not a tested strong support uh, for the Aussie USD. And below that, obviously, we still have the 65. And in terms of a technical correction, the correct way is that it should correct itself closer to 65 cents. So be a little bit more cautious with the Aussie USD. At the start of this week, do not just assume that the US dollar is actually going to get stronger. Now, this is also reflected on the Euro USD because the Euro USD, uh, as we go through the webinars last week during the SMC, we did talk a little bit about uh, a liquidity sweep that happened at around 1.10 on the Euro USD. And from then on, price has continued to push lower. Uh, we actually closed the market at the range there be, be, between 1.0850 and 1.09, started the week there as well. The point is for this one here, there's no clear indications that the euro is actually stronger than the US. Therefore, the comments at the end of the week on Friday in terms of the potential rate cuts, that's not really reflected onto all the major currencies. Uh, in terms of the FX market, the FX market does not come to the conclusion that the US dollar is actually a weak currency. It is actually pretty stable and the Euro USD is kind of reflecting it because it's currently traded between 1.0850 1.09. It is currently traded below the pivot on the weekly, uh, weekly pivot. And if it stays below that weekly pivot, which is 1.09, then it could actually be pressured lower. We are currently looking at 1.08 and potential return to 1.07 on the euro USD should it lose support at 1.0850. Now, for the pound USD, this one here is much more intense because if you take a look at the movement, uh, price movement last week, it's unable to break 1.27 while attempting to break it every single day. So therefore, the intent to sell at 1.27, it's clear. There are a lot, a lot of sellers that are kind of accumulating a short position around 1.27, and we can see the pressure there on the pound USD. It's unable to break above 1.27. But at the same time, we are also looking at demands building up around 1.2625 to 1.2650. So this is currently kind of locked into position where we actually have buyers and sellers in equal strength. Obviously, um, 
the concern for the pound USD right now is that the resistance at 1.27 could be so strong, uh, sellers could just pile up around 1.27. It could actually push price back down. Obviously, the clear case scenario, clear cut scenario would actually be a daily close below 1.26. I think at that point there will be a lot more sellers that could come in into the market, and that could push price back down to about 1.2550, 1.25. Now, obviously, because I say this is currently a lock in a stalemate the opposite could happen as well if sellers are unable to defend that 1.27 position and buyers keeps coming in into the market and actually manage to push price beyond 1.2750 that could actually lift this a lot higher to 1.2850 1.29 the current consensus is that the momentum is not showing it the momentum is kind of fading out a little bit so there are more there are higher probability that sellers could actually push this down. Uh, that has uh, that is actually a much higher probability than buyers really pushing uh, beyond 1.27 because uh, the market is easily spooked and anything could happen, uh, and fear would actually activate a lot faster than you know. Um, risk appetite in the market so just be a little bit more cautious when we're looking at the pound usd uh right now the evident and the intent to sell at 1.27 is very obvious uh and we'll see what happens here i think if price starts moving below 1.2650 1.26 that would be a safer confirmation that sellers has actually won uh the tuck war that we are looking at on the pound usd all right next up is the dollar japanese yen we talk about 147.25 that level was broken uh again on the back on friday's comment we are right now close to 146 145 now 146 145 level is a very strong level because this is the level that was broken on the back of the ycc change that happened in july now price is coming coming back to 145 146 we're expecting this to be a stronger support for the dollar japanese yen but right now uh there are no indication in the market that buyers are in control i think sellers are still in control the rsi still points for uh further drop to the downside but obviously we, we are looking at a very strong support around 145 146 for the dollar japanese yen all right this uh is definitely the one chart uh that everyone's probably going to be talking about for this week so gold broke through the all-time high of 2079 uh, which is on may 2023 and uh, the price today actually goes all the way up to 2144 now that's a $70 gain from the market opening the concern that we have here with an all-time high like this is that a lot of traders are going to be looking at this and say oh you know what it's time to start buying gold uh, significantly but from history what we know about an all-time high level is that there are cause of concern because buyers in the market would need to figure out I like taking a jab in the market in terms of where to actually exit their position, right? Uh, because it's an all-time high. There's no reference points uh, that can be taken. So buyers are in fear in terms of holding on to their positions. And that, that's basically what we saw happen with the long week that we have this morning. So price as price continues to go up, there's a lot of profit taking that happens. It's not people actually selling at all those all-time high levels, but it's more profit taking that happens. I know people are getting out the positions. Now, the concern that I have is that every time we see the all-time highs, now I remember this uh, especially in 2008 when gold first breaks 800 and then not long after that 1000 and then never look back. Uh, we could be very well in the same scenario, but with the case of 2008, there was something else back then because there was a global financial crisis. Unless something intense like that happens again, I don't think there's actually any key drivers. Obviously, the key drivers that we have is the current conflict that's ongoing in Israel and Gaza. Um, but, you know, that's that's one thing. The other thing uh, that could be attributed to the run to the upside here is obviously the comments from the Fed there. But I don't think that actually plays a huge part as well at this point in time. Now, one thing I want to point out is that once price reached this all-time high, like what it did with in May 2023, we actually saw a huge pullback to the downside we actually see the market slides from 2079 all the way back closer to about 1900 level that's a significant pullback now comparing it to today the week that happens in the may uh, 2023 and today the week today is about three times longer so i think the selling pressure could actually build up and one thing that we need to be concerned about is actually where the weekly pivot is located which is 2050 therefore if the week 
manages to push gold below 2050, that could actually trigger more of a long-term selling on gold. But for as long as it's able to maintain a position above 2050, we need to see whether or not the market creates a range for um, traders to kind of establish you know, where are the potential swing highs and swing lows in the market? Where could we place our stop losses? Where could we project our new take profit target? If there's no swing, it's going to be hard to do that. So obviously, there are two type of traders out there. One that would look at this and say, you know, let's just go crazy. Or the other one that would just sit back and say, you know what, let's, let's let the market do its things. Uh, once it creates a little bit of a range, then it's a safer way to analyze the market because we would have a new stop loss and a new take profit. I don't know which kind of trader you are, but those are going to be the only two options if you're trading gold this week. All right. And lastly, it's going to be oil. Now, for oil, let me talk a little bit about the OPEC uh, meeting that we have. Uh, basically, there was a little bit of a voluntary cut that happened, and I think the biggest contributor would be Saudi Arabia and Russia. Uh, and they also allocated extra cuts uh, per day. And right now, in terms of just the the Saudi Arabia and Russia, the cut uh, that they allowed for reserve cut, it's actually 1,200,000 barrels per day. That's a significant number. And from the comments that we have from OPEC right now, it's not really them uh, about to push oil prices up, but it's really just to maintain the current price level because they are looking at 2024 and expecting a sharp drop in demand for oil because of a slowdown in manufacturing economic slowdown is likely going to happen in 2024 so they are basically projecting that to happen and for now if you take a look at oil there are no demands for oil whatsoever this is currently still stable in a little bit of a range but the concern here would obviously for as long as it's below 80 dollars it's likely unlikely to actually be a bullish market for oil. So right now, this one here would actually fluctuate, uh, probably grinding lower, closer to about seventy dollars uh, at this point in time for oil. So just be a little bit more uh, cautious in terms of trading oil. Don't think that this is actually a low level to buy. There are actually not enough reasons at this point in time because the situation in Gaza doesn't intensify. Um, I don't think that's actually going to be a driver for uh, oil prices to go up. And uh, with the voluntary cut that was just announced last week, the cut was so big uh, and there's actually room to cut more uh, without having to go on to a meeting to discuss uh, what kind of cuts they are willing, production cuts they are willing to do. All right. So be cautious on oil. I don't think this is a buyer's market at all. All right. So don't forget that we are running our two final sessions for the SMC webinars, which is going to be tomorrow on Tuesday and then on Wednesday. On Thursday, we are going to be doing a news trading webinar. And then on Friday, that's when we are actually going to be doing our live NFP trading. So full schedule for this week. So make sure you mark your calendars and I'll see you in our webinars.